Well, A Midsummer Night's Dream is a classically complicated story. Like it's it's one of Shakespeare's plays that people always say, I get confused about this. But we have interpreted it in a different way to add a steampunk element and an ethereal element as well. Midsummer Night's Dream has three little sections. There's a story about a couple, a girl whose father is very, how can we say, male chauvinistic. He wants her to marry the person he wants her to marry, but she doesn't want to marry that person. She's in love with somebody else. And she tells her best friend, Helena, about the fact that she wants to be with this other person. Now, Helena loves the person her father wants her to marry, so it becomes a little, <laughs> little complicated there. Now, they run away, the two people who want to get married, to the forest where the other plot happens because it's a story about the queen of the fairies and her husband who have a strange relationship. A, they have a good marriage, but they're always trying to better themselves. Like in other words, if one has str was strong character, the other one wants to be stronger. When you start saying everybody's name, it gets really confusing. And that's why I think when we watch the action only, it can actually be more clear. Ananda spent a lot of time with the actual script of Midsummer Night's Dream. So Ananda is very familiar with the dialogue, which is very helpful when you're trying to translate something without words. So we were able to go through the scenes and break down what needed to happen in each scene. And it's great as a choreographer to have somebody who knows the dramaturgy like that, because this is a direct interpretation from Shakespeare. So it's very important to be able to go back and be like, did we hit the marks we needed to in that scene? Yes, we did. Let's move on. We did the choreography with all of the action from the play, having to change certain things, you know, because the dialogue about stuff that happens off stage doesn't work in ballet, so it has to happen in front of you. But basically, we did the whole Shakespeare play as a ballet. For us to translate from words to movement is, is not that difficult. We use a lot of mime. So we will use, uh, like for example, you and I and love. And so we have hand gestures and pantomime that we rely on, but you can also interpret that in the body. So if somebody is uncomfortable, you can, their body language will change to be able to keep continuing that story on. One of the goals of our ballet was to help people understand Shakespeare's work a little bit better, a little bit easier. And I think with the costuming, that was one of the elements we wanted to bring in was that the fairies are fairies, the villagers are villagers, and then the couples are specific couples that do go together. Ananda had the great idea that all of the humans in the story are all from the steampunk world. And so when you see any of the lovers or the royalty, they're all part of this world that we've built that's steampunk. And because it has like sort of the Victorian style, even though it's outlandish and amazing and whimsical, it still gives us a feeling more of the everyday and then versus the magical. The townspeople, we actually kept to a pretty strict palette of more muted tones. And the reason why is we wanted to give the audience the impression that the villagers are kind of boxed in. They don't see the colors. They don't see the otherworldliness that's going on. And so the fairies, you'll notice, are dressed very boldly in bright colors. They're all body painted to give it an, an otherworldly effect so that the audience would recognize these are not the same people. They don't belong together. Each individual costume has individual elements to it. So what we tried to do was try to imagine what a street child in Victorian times would have worn, but then add pieces that they would have looked for to be steampunk. So for a lot of the children's costumes, we added bustles or petticoats under their skirts, but then also added leather corsetry or leather waist pieces, things of that nature to kind of give it that industrial element, but also really stick to that Victorian theme. When you build a ballet like this, you want it to all be one cohesive piece and you want it to all make sense. So that takes a lot of planning with the designers, with the people building the costumes, and then actually trying to take the costumes that you build 
and make sure they work for the production. It takes a city. It takes a lot of people to put on a production like this, and luckily we have a wonderful community here that helps support us in that. The extraordinary thing is when they first asked me to do Midsummer, like last year, and I started thinking about it, I came up with this idea. I had this vision in my head, and watching this ballet and seeing that it looks exactly like that vision has been so amazing. I'm like, I can't believe it, it's real. That was in my head and now it's real. And I'm watching these talented people do all this stuff, you know, and all of this amazing visuals that I hoped we would have that we do have. And then the most extraordinary thing for me has been listening to the audience's laughter, not in my scenes, but in the other scenes. So I can just be there and, and see the action and hear the like guffawing laughter. One audience member told me, she said, I laughed so hard I snorted. And I was like, that's perfect. That's exactly um, what we wanted to happen is that people watch the ballet and they just like lose it in their seats.